Hey guys, it's Mrs. Stevens here. I'm going to review 3D solids with you. Surface area and volume. So, um, whether you've tried these problems already or not, let's just let's just go through them. Take them one step at a time. So the first four on the front here are surface area. And then the, on the back we've got volume. All right, find the surface area of the 3D solid. So obviously first you have to know what kind of shape it is. This first one is a cone. So if you were to grab your pink study card and look up the surface area of a cone, you'll hopefully have that written down as pi r l plus pi r squared. And little r stands for the radius of the cone, and little l stands for the slant height. So this 20 right here, which is this height right there, that's the slant height. This would be the radius, which is not labeled. So because I have a right triangle, I can do the Pythagorean theorem using 16 squared, r squared, and 20 squared. And if you solve this for r, you get 12. So we have pi times 12 times 20 plus pi times 12 squared. 12 times 20 is 240, and 12 squared is 144. Now the directions say, leave your answer in terms of pi if necessary, meaning if there's a circle in the problem, which at the bottom of our cone is a circle, you're going to end up with pi. Units are inches squared for area. Okay, and you just leave it like that with the pi in it. All right, second shape. This is a picture of a cylinder. So again, check your study card. See if you have the surface area of a cylinder. If you don't, jot it down. It's pi 2 pi. There's two circles. 2 pi r squared. That's the top circle and the bottom circle plus the wrapper, which is 2 pi r h. The radius in this case is the radius of this circle, given to be 6. And the overall height of the cylinder is this 20. Okay, 2 times pi times 6 squared plus 2 times pi times 6 times 20. So 6 squared is 36, 6 times 20 is 120, this gives me 72, 36 times 2, this gives me 240. Both pieces have a pi on them, so I can add them together, leave it in terms of pi, and units are again uh, length squared, length unit squared, so in this case meters squared. So that's the surface area of the cylinder. The surface area of a pyramid is a little trickier. So on our study card in my class, what we have written down is that you have four triangles plus the base. base area, even though it's not labeled, the base of this pyramid is a square. So the base is 10 times 10. The triangles are these sides, these four triangles, which I'm just going to trace over here. They look like this. And you're trying to find the area of that triangle. And there's four of them. They're all the same. So I'm going to put a big 4 here, 
and then the area of a triangle, which is one of our formulas on unit five, two-dimensional shapes, area of a triangle is the base times the height of the triangle divided by two. So the base is this 10, the height of the triangle is this 12, and then I divide that by two, that gives me 60. And there's four of those triangles, so that's 240. This 13 right here, this is one of the edges of the pyramid, and that's a decoy number. That doesn't come into play. All right, a prism. Prisms, <laughs> prisms are the hardest one. I left it till last. <sighs> the surface area of a prism, there's no formula. What we wrote down on our card was Add up all the areas of all the faces and bases. So this is a triangular prism. Okay, triangular prism. And there are five different sides. I'm going to call them the left side, the right side, the back side, the top, and the bottom. All right, and I'm going to try to trace out which one I'm talking about. So it's helpful on the picture if you label what you know. So this edge right here is 12. This edge is 25. That also makes this edge 25. This back edge is 15. So this back edge is also 15. Okay, this edge is a 12, and this edge is a 9. Okay, so the left hand side. The left-hand side is 25 by 9. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've got the 25 here and the 9 here. So that rectangle, I just shaded yellow. That rectangle is the left-hand side and it's 25 by 9. The right-hand side is 12 by 25. And that's what I'm calling this side. There's 12. There's 25. Okay, that whole rectangle right there is 12 by 25. And then the back side is 15 by 25. I'm going to try to show you what that looks like in black. So the back side is this 15 and this 25. I'm just going to trace it over in black. That rectangle is in the back of it, 15 by 25. Oops. And now the top is a triangle, and the bottom is a triangle. And the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. And those triangles. Those triangles are right here, this guy. That's 9, that's 12. And because it's a right triangle, that's the height, that's the base. 9 by 12 divided by 2. Okay, so if you see all five pieces, then you're all set. This one is 225, this one is 300, this is 375, this is 54, and this is another 54. Add them all together, you get 1,008. All right, and I think that this one 
Always the prism is the trickiest for people. All right, same shapes on the back here, but now we're going to switch gears to volume. So if you look on your pink card, on your final exam card, you should have the volume of a cone written. Volume equals one third pi r squared h. And this is our same cone from the front, so we still know that the radius is 12. Now you can do the one third in the front like that, or you can do divide by 3 at the end. Those are mean the same exact thing. One third of it or divide by 3, they mean the same thing. Now notice the height. The height I'm using is this straight up and down height. It has to go perpendicular from the base all the way to the tip of the cone. That's the height. So 12 squared is 144 times 16 divided by 3. Just use your calculator. 768 pi. And even though there's no units on it, let's pretend it's inches. And volume units would be inches cubed. Volume of a cylinder. Okay, I'm going to check my card, make sure I have this one written down. Volume equals pi r squared h. So there's no divided by 3 on this one because it doesn't come to a point. The radius I know is 6, and the height I know is 20. So this is 720 pi. Oops, not centimeters, it's meters. Okay, now we have another pyramid. Volume of a pyramid, if I look on my card, what it says on my card is one-third capital B times H. But then we made a note, capital B is the area of the base. So in my picture, my base is a rectangle, which is 5 times 3, which is 15. So this base right here is a rectangle, a 5 by 3 rectangle. So the area of that rectangle is 15. So I take that 15, and that 15 goes here. Now again, height for a cone and for a pyramid has to go straight up the middle. So that is 7. Again, I can do the 15 times the 7, and then divide by 3. That'll come out with 35. Okay, and the trickiest part there is the idea of capital B being the area of the base. In the case of the pyramid, there's only one base. But in the case of this prism, where you have capital B, Capital B is the area of the base. Now, in a pyramid, there's two bases. And how do you know what the bases are? The bases are parallel to each other. So I've got this triangle and this triangle. They're parallel to each other. There's two of them. Those are the bases. And remember, the base is a triangle. The area of a triangle is little b times little h divided by 2. So the area of the base is 54. That 54 is going to show up right here. That's the area of the base. And then the height of the overall prism 
is the distance between the two bases. So that's the 25. That's, you have the two parallel bases and the distance in between them, this 25, that's the overall height or how tall the overall prism is. If I multiply those two together, I get 1350. Okay, so H is the distance. the two bases. I think these are two of the trickier concepts. The overall height of the prism and the capital B, the area of the base shape. If you've got that straight, you're in good shape. All right. Thanks, guys. I think we only have one more class until the final. So if I don't talk to you again on video, good luck.